Welcome to St. Elizabeth's. My name is Father John, and I am the priest, and I am delighted that you have chosen to use this brief liturgy of the Word as your worship this Sunday morning. You will find the parish bulletin and the parish news linked below in the description of this video. You can also worship with us in person at socially distanced and masked services at 9.30 a.m. and at 11.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Go to our website to learn more. Let us now take a time of silence as we prepare to worship and as we meditate on what it means to focus and center our lives on love. Welcome to St. Elizabeth's. Thank you. May God be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for, my, for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one holy living and triune God. Amen. This Sunday, both our collect and our gospel reading focus on love. 
this Sunday and this college remind us that the purpose of our life, the goal of our life, the guiding light of our life is love. The degree to which we care for and express our desire for the well-being of others, we discover in them the beauty with which they are created, uh, the way in which we direct and purpose our life for the expression of others' care. This is what our life is about. So often I get distracted from that. I get uh, wrapped up in politics or in some problem I have or some need to excel or some desire to meet some sort of obligation and to prove my worth or my competency. Then I get frustrated and angry uh, or I get, you know, I get a sort of energy that just bulldozes over what's going on around me and that is not the way of love. Being focused on how my life connects and impacts the life of others, that is the path of love. And guiding my activities so that they are for the care of others, that is the path of love. And that's what we see in Jesus' life. Jesus was focused on healing, on listening, on caring for others. He did not judge. And he also taught his disciples how to be presences, presences of healing and of loving care for others. Was it that Jesus didn't care about uh, what was going on in the nation? Was it that Jesus didn't care about the economy or Jesus didn't care about um, anything else other than people, other than, 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 than how his life impacted others? No, I think he cared about all those things because all of those things affect people and affect people's lives and, and keep them sometimes from thriving and, and keep them from the joy and the satisfaction and the fullness of life which God intends for us. But Jesus understood that that is the guiding principle, the direction. And if we stray from that for any reason, even if it's like we think we can increase love later by just not being loving now, Jesus says that's not true. I think that Judas, in fact, wanted Jesus to act politically. I think so many people felt like, oh gosh, if we could just get rid of the Romans and just have a Davidic king in Jerusalem, then everything would be great. And Jesus realized, you know, that kind of pursuit is not the solution to the problem. You know, the emperor could rule. And if all people act in loving and caring ways who governed their actions by how those actions impacted the lives of others and how those actions could be expressions of care and concern for others. She doesn't care what kind, it doesn't matter what kind of government you have. I mean, if you could really get everyone to do that, would you even need a government? It's just not clear. Now, Jesus understood that living his life in a loving fashion in concern for others and teaching his disciples to do that was the most important way that he could be the presence of God's glory in the world. And by teaching people to be and do that was the best way to heal the ills of our society and of our community and to care for those who, who do not know love. You know, Jesus realizes the power of this. Because of Jesus' deep attachment and connection to God, Jesus knows that God is love. And Jesus knows that by living his life in care for the creation, by directing his life to that purpose, he is bringing the power, the creative, life-giving, life-sustaining power of God into the world. And it's that power which raised him from the dead. Indeed, he, we call him God incarnate only because his full life is an expression of love. Not the feeling, but the action. He said he lays down his life for his friends. He lays down his life for love. I'm reading right now the presiding bishop, Michael Curry's book called The Way of Love. And he's very clear. He talks about love is an action. Love is in community. It is between people, and it is it is uh, it is something that take that 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 governs and guides our life. It, 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 it our actions, our thoughts, everything that we are, 
is love. And people are not always lovely back. That's not the question. People often will not be lovely back. Um, but is our life directed and governed by love? You know, today is Mother's Day. And um, it doesn't come up in the prayer book to tell us that it's Mother's Day. So I think when I was preparing the bulletin, I may have forgotten to include a prayer for mothers. But I did include one in the Liturgy of the Word, and I will take that prayer uh, to church tomorrow. Um, but mothers often reflect that love. Now, not all mothers are perfect, and we shouldn't hold mothers to the standard of perfection. Some mothers have many challenges, and I think it often impacts their capacity to show the love you know, in their best selves they would like to show to their children. Um, let's, not, let's not idealize people. Let's love people as they are. But many mothers, many mothers uh, do, do find ways to express their deep love for their children. And sometimes that devotion, that devotion is enormous. And I think that in that they reflect the love of God. Love God, this divine being, this divine mystery behind the universe, you know, brings forth all of creation out of love. It comes out of his creative capacities as an expression of himself. They say the image of God dwells in us. But it's also an expression of the power and the being of God. And I think it's wonderful that mothers can be a symbol to us of that. Love is the governor, governor of our lives. It is the principle by which I ask about everything I'm doing. Is it governed by love? You know, I, I love to listen to politics. My dad uh, did that. And sometimes I would really like to just fix the whole political system, right? Um, and I get frustrated and angry at people who seem to be in the way. But the question is, do I love them? You know, can I moderate my language? Can I be patient? When, when people act strange, and they do act strange, and they do think crazy things, and they do think rubbish things sometimes, but do I love them? Is the way I behave toward them an expression of my love? Sometimes you say a hard truth. Sometimes you ask a hard question. But is it loving? Is it said in such a way as to invite someone into greater relationship? And my job, you know, sometimes I just want to be the best priest ever. But the question is, am I loving my parish as being a priest? Or with the things I do, am I somehow trying to build up some image of myself or giving some direction to the church that I think it should have? But the question is, is it love? Is it governed? Is it directed by love? Is it directed by care for others? Is it open to the power of God's love, which sometimes has to just sort of push self aside and just wait to see what happens, you know? We don't have to be the best at our profession. We don't have to be the richest. We don't have to be the most good looking, although we are. We are very good looking. All of us at St. Elizabeth's, very good looking. But we don't have to be. The guide is are we able to express love, both in disposition and feeling? I think it is a feeling, but it's also a way of life and action and expressing our desire for the well being of others. Is my profession, in my profession, okay, maybe I'm not the best at what I do, but am I letting what I do be governed by love? Do I know how my job is a way of loving other people? Do I know how my way of mothering or fathering is a way of love by other people? I might not be the best volunteer in the world if I'm in a volunteer organization, but do I treat the people I care with uh, as full people wanting to get to know them? I mean, I think so often when we volunteer, we're trying to fix a problem that we we feel uncomfortable that we have more and others are poor. But do we really love the poor? Do we listen to them? I love that idea that we're having this volunteer uh, fair. I'm calling it love in action volunteer fair, because one of the ways to love people is to give them opportunities to love back. And by inviting people to our church to see all of the ways they can get involved in our community is an invitation to them to become people who govern and direct their lives by love. Jesus calls us friends. And we are reminded to judge each and every moment of our life by no other quality 
Then was our intent love? Was our action love? The well-being of others? Because when we behave in loving action, we are showing the world God. For God is love. And God's glory is when his creatures love one another. In the name of the one holy living and triune God. Amen. Today, in our prayers, I ask you to remember Sue, Devin, Davis, Pam, Elise, Jackie, Paul, Pat, Pete, Henry, Angie, Terry, Jenna, Christy, Keegan, Robert, Richard, David, Margaret, Sharon, Judy, Joy, Vicki, Reese, Ken, Ruth, Bill, Randy, Nancita, Winnell, Bob, Susan, Paul, Marty, Francis, Linda, Maggie, Mary, David, Judy, George, Walton, and all who have desired our prayers. I ask you this week to give thanks for the birthdays of Elaine and for all who celebrate anniversaries this week, including Jim and Angie, and Marcy, and Jim. Let us remember these by praying together the prayer our Lord taught us. Please say with me at home, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Sundays O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing to our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Guidance Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we end our prayers today with a prayer for mothers. Let us pray for all the mothers among us today, for our own mothers, those living and those who have passed away, for the mothers who loved us and for those who fell short of loving us fully, for all who hope to be mothers someday, and for those whose hope to have children has been frustrated. For all mothers who have lost children, for all women and men who have mothered others in any way, those who have been our substitute mothers, and we who have done so for those in need, for the earth that bore us and provides us sustenance, we pray this all in the name of God, our great and loving Mother. 
Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us using this video. Please leave a comment, like the video, subscribe to our channel, recommend it to a friend, and do consider coming to visit us in person. Everything you will need to know is on our website, whose link is in this image. May God bless you this week. May the love of the risen Christ fill your hearts with joy and may you become God's agents in the world for well-being, for care, and for loving kindness. Amen.